Okay, so what happened was, um, when this guitar got stolen, I was at a music festival. Um, it was kind of a similar setting to another music festival I go to, to a lot where instruments are safe and not just anybody can go traipsing through the campground and picking up um, someone else's instrument and walking off with it. And I was really not as careful as I should have been. Um, and this guitar disappeared. And um, it was really heartbreaking. <laughs> I, I did not realize how much this guitar meant to me. I actually felt like I'd taken it for granted um, to a certain extent when I put it away the night before. And uh, as I drove away from, I guess I'll just leave out the details. Um, you know, kind of looking in the rearview mirror, uh, general direction to where my guitar probably still was, but I'm driving away without my guitar. And, um, I mean, I had already had this guitar, how long? Mm, 15, 20 years or so. Um, and let's see, the main point is technique, but, um, so I was telling you about the, the shape of the back of this guitar has sort of a, if you were to like, I hate to even say it this way, if you were to cut it and, and have a cross section, the back of this guitar, um, well, let me get the back of this guitar looks kind of, kind of like that. That's the back of the neck of this guitar. But um, while this guitar was gone for five years, uh, I was playing a guitar that looked, at first I couldn't play anything without crying. Uh, like every guitar, just, I mean, um, and I played some nice guitars, but I just, I just couldn't play a different guitar without crying. Um, and, and it was difficult when I started, so, a lot of guitars have a neck shape more like this, and that's what I was playing for five years. Um, I actually had um, a lot of trouble with my old injury. I, I guess I haven't told you all that much about my injury, but when I was in, um, I was a classical guitar, a performance major for classical guitar, and we were required to practice four hours a day. And um, long story short, I had bad technique, which was not corrected. Um, a lot of teachers figure if it's working and it's not hurting, that's okay. And I got away with a bad technique for a long, long time, uh, almost um, to my senior recital. And, but what happened, and it was a tricky thing because it wasn't hurting when I was playing guitar, but I eventually was having a lot of pain and difficulty here and I realized that when I was practicing regularly like I was supposed to, or practicing extra for a recital, I was having pain other times of the day for other motions. So it was really hard to realize that I was hurting myself by playing guitar. Um, and then by the time I started going to the doctor, uh, we figured out that I had torn the, the ligaments in the back of my hand. And that's, I ended up having surgery, and that's not an injury um, that they were able to fix at that time. They were just able to like clean out, what he said is cleaned out the inflammation, which sounds kind of weird. Hard to understand, but it did help. And um, of course, okay, so that's however many years ago, 97? Um, the main thing I learned then as far as changing technique was to keep my wrist straight instead of, you know, like a lot of um, people, I've even seen people teach this, you know, a lot of people like to play their G chord or whenever it's difficult, they like to just throw the wrist out like that. And that's not what we want. We want it straight. So if you're used to playing it like this and you have to change it to this, of course, it feels awkward. It's just like almost as bad as, almost as challenging as when you first learned your G chord, but it is possible to change. Um, so anyway, I was one of those. I played like this. 
So when I'm working with somebody and they say, well, it's working, yeah, I say, um, it will, it'll work until it doesn't, which it worked for me for how many years would that have been? About 20 years um, before it stopped working. Um, okay, try to stay on track. So the, the main thing here is we can change technique without frustration <laughs> and the agony of feeling like we're starting all the way back at the beginning. So when I first had my injury and my surgery, I learned to keep my wrist straight. Um, but that's really all I learned. And about 20 years later, when I started playing harp, uh, grab a harp here. Um, I brought this my, my little harp I haven't shown you before. My big harp's not in the background today. That's why I always have a harp here because my harp teacher um, really gave me back my hands get the okay good got plenty of time um my harp teacher gave me back my hands she when uh, harp players okay here's a big thing about guitar relatively speaking when you look at the course of human history and music guitar is like a newfangled invention it really hasn't been around that long compared to something like a harp which you know you had David playing for King Solomon, you know, in the Old Testament <laughs> of the Bible. So um, harps have, harps go way back and um, harpists have, and, and a lot of like violinists, pianists have very well developed, um, would you say pedagogy techniques? Um, Sometimes there's more than one technique that's taught and respected and accepted. Like on harp, there's two main techniques. Um, but, like, what is it, French? Well, it doesn't matter. You're not, um, most of you are not harpists. So, um, they have very well developed techniques that work so that you can play the instrument really well without hurting yourself. Because obviously, if you're hurting yourself, you're not going to be able to progress and play really well. Um, so the main thing, this is such a cool thing. It applies to guitar so well. So that's, that's why I don't worry if you don't want to play harp, that what harpists do that, um, I've never seen a guitarist teach this, but what harpists do is after the, the red ones, by the way, are C and the blue ones are F. So this is C, D, E, F. What harpists do is with, after every pluck, they relax their hand completely. Um, there's some other technique I'm showing, which is not important, but let's just say I'm playing two notes. My hand's completely relaxed before the next note. So let me show you. Relax, relax, relax. After every single, even if you're playing something fast, you know, you are supposed to relax between every single pluck. And that's what I do um, with my guitar hands now. Actually, this, oh shoot, I'm kind of getting off topic again. Y'all are going to get used to that. Somebody called me on it, but um, that's just the way it is. <laughs> uh, the main idea today is how to change technique without frustration, but um, yeah, this is just an example, not to, well, we'll teach this some other time. So in the right hand, I play, I play like my harp. Um, I relax when I, I relax my right hand between every pluck. And the really cool thing is uh, we'll have to have a lesson just about relaxing often. Um, it's called ballistic relaxation. But um, what you can do, I might've taught this before, uh, I used to hold tension in my hand all the time, and most guitarists do. Like, we have to squeeze, and that's the whole point, to squeeze hard enough to get a good sound. But in between chords, we don't have to keep the tension in our hands. So it's a good idea to practice your chord, like in a warm-up or exercise. Great exercise. Play the chord and then relax completely. Feel this complete completely relaxed. When your hand is relaxed, it will naturally be a little bit curled. It won't be like that. It'll be like this. 
So play a chord, relax completely, feel it relaxed. Play another chord, feel it totally relaxed. Play another chord, feel it relaxed. So you can do this very slowly at first. Play a chord, relax completely. Play a chord, relax completely. And gradually you'll get to where you can relax instantaneously very often, not just between chord changes, but um, while you're strumming, you can just let go of the chord for an instant and relax your hand. I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, but I suspect that frequent relaxation, that might be the best first habit actually, because um, if you can relax your hand completely frequently, you're saving yourself from the wear and tear of those bad habits. So that might be the first good habit to change is to practice relaxing completely really often and, and be patient. It's, it takes a while to, for it to become a habit. Um, but that way, if you do have any bad tech, residual bad technique, um, you're just giving your hand a break from whatever it is you're doing wrong. Anytime you use your hand to create tension, any exercise, not just playing an instrument, <clears throat> Frequent relaxation allows your muscles to get stronger. But if the tension is there all the time, that does not result in your muscles getting stronger. That results in your muscles getting worn out and weaker. Um, so let's just make sure I stay on track, which was all about this process of changing. Um, so when I got my um, guitar back, I I had been playing harp because well, I thought, well, actually there was a time when I thought my guitar days were coming to a close um, because I hadn't learned enough about good technique yet. I hadn't learned about the relaxed hands and I was holding a lot of tension there. And um, yeah, it's a long story, but I, I began learning harp. I learned how to relax often. And so when I got my guitar back, I didn't play my old favorite songs. I just, I, that's about the time I discovered the, the well-tempered work or what I'm going to call guitar mastery exercises. I just started playing very simple exercises, going very slow, working on relaxing often and learning what my own technique is, which is a little unique and specific to me. Um, I wouldn't teach everyone to play the exact same way I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I can play my guitar now. <laughs> and uh, how long? I got my guitar back in 2016. And I, you know, I can't tell you how long it was. It was a long process. Um, and it was sad to not be able to play it right away but it has been a process of continually being able to play more and more and more instead of less and less and less. And uh, just learning how to use the warm ups and the exercises to focus on whatever the new technique is, to focus on the relaxation or the new position. And then that makes the new technique a little more automatic. And then when you go into music, it tends to make, um, it just tends to become a habit and be part of your music. And then when it's a little more comfortable, then you can play a song focusing on your technique. It's a very gradual process. And um, it was actually really exciting and not heartbreaking for me, um, I guess, because I'd gone so long with very limited. I played a lot, but I actually what I played was rather limited and simple. So I hope that helps for now. I'll see you again soon. And um, thanks for being here. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.